Geometry involves a lot of angles, which may not sound like a lot of fun right now, but the more you practice, the more fun they get. Okay, maybe not. But the more you practice, the better you'll get at completing SAT problems involving angles. In this lesson, we'll go over some of the rules of angles and go through an angle problem together. An important rule to remember is that two angles that form a line will always add up to 180 degrees. In this example, we know that the line CD is 180 degrees because all straight lines are 180 degrees. We're also told that angle ABD is 60 degrees. To find the measure of CBA, we can write the equation x plus 60 equals 180. Then, we can solve for the missing angle by subtracting 60 from both sides. We get x equals 120. So, angle CBA is 120 degrees. Another important geometry rule is that all circles are 360 degrees. So, if you know the angle measurements within a circle, such as 120, 90, and 10, then you can easily find the missing angle. Start by setting all angles equaling 360. So, 360 equals x plus 90 plus 120 plus 10. Doing the math, we find 360 equals x plus 220. Subtracting 220 from both sides, we have 140 equals x, which is the measure of our missing angle. Now that we've got lines and circles down, Let's go through a few other figures before jumping into a problem. A quadrilateral, which is a four-sided figure, also has 360 degrees in its interior angles. Given the following parallelogram with the measure of three angles noted, we could solve for our missing angle. We want to set the sum of all the angles equal to 360. So, 120 plus 60 plus 120 plus x equals 360. After adding, we have x plus 300 equals 360. Subtracting 300 from both sides, we get x equals 60. So, our missing angle has a measure of 60 degrees. Did you notice that the angles across from each other on the parallelogram had the same degree measures? We'll get into that a bit later. Knowing the degrees of the parallelogram was really useful in that example, but we don't want to keep memorizing the number of degrees in different shapes. Instead, we can memorize a simple formula. A polygon is a closed figure with three or more straight sides. In any polygon with n sides, the sum of the interior angles is equal to n minus 2 times 180 degrees. If we're given a regular polygon with 12 sides, we would plug this into our formula. Sum equals 12 minus 2 times 180 degrees. After subtracting, we get 10 times 180 degrees, or sum equals 1,800 degrees as the total of all the angle measurements combined. To find the measure of one angle, we need to divide our sum by the number of angles that our polygon has, which is 1,800 degrees divided by 12. We find that the measure of each angle is 150 degrees. There is one more way to solve for the missing angles. You can also divide the polygon into triangles. Here's what I mean. To find the sum of all angles for this pentagon, we need to start by picking a single corner, or vertex, of the pentagon. Then, draw a line from that vertex to the other corners. You'll notice that you've made three triangles which share vertices with the pentagon. To find out how many degrees are in the interior angles of the pentagon, you can use your knowledge that each triangle has 180 degrees. Multiplying the number of triangles within the pentagon by 180 degrees will give you the sum of the interior angles. Since we have three triangles, our equation is 3 times 180 degrees equals x. After multiplying, we get x equals 540 degrees. 
We've learned a lot about figures and angles, and now we have two strategies for solving for the sum of the interior angles of polygons. Let's apply some of this information to solve a problem. If BD bisects angle ABC, X equals, our answer choices are A, 40, B, 45, C, 50, and D, 55. Let's underline the fact and circle the keyword. We need to find the measure of angle X, so we'll label our answer choices as value of angle X. We know from the picture that angle EBA is equal to 80 and that EC is a straight line. This means that angle EBA plus angle ABC is equal to 180 degrees. Let's plug in 80 degrees for angle EBA, which gives us 80 plus angle ABC equals 180. Subtracting 80 from both sides, we have angle ABC equals 100 degrees. This brings us one step closer to solving for X, which is angle ABD. We're told that line BD bisects angle ABC. A bisector always cuts an angle in half. Let's use this information to solve for X by writing an equation, X equals one half times angle ABC. Plugging in 100 degrees for angle ABC, we have X equals one half times 100. After multiplying, we get x equals 50 degrees. Looking at our answer choices, c is 50 degrees. Circle it because it's the right answer. Okay, we've got one more practice question in this lesson, but this time we're going to make it a pause and solve. Here's the question. Triangle ABC shown is a right triangle such that angle ABC has a measure of 55 degrees. What is the measure of angle BCD in degrees? The answer choices are A, 45 degrees, B, 55 degrees, C, 125 degrees, and D, 145 degrees. Now it's your turn. Ready, set, pause. <laughs> And we're back. Did you get answer choice D? If so, awesome. If not, no worries. Let's work through this problem together and make sure we get the same answer. As always, the first thing we should do is underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. We're looking to find angle BCD, so let's label that. Let's also label angle ABC, which the question tells us is 55 degrees. Now let's figure out the third angle of the triangle. We know that all three angles of the triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 90 plus 55 plus angle BCA add up to 180. By subtracting 90 from both sides and then subtracting 55 from both sides, we find out that angle BCA equals 35. Let's write that on the picture. But we're not done yet. We're not looking to solve for angle BCA. We're looking to solve for angle BCD. But we're on the right path because we know that angles BCA and BCD form a line. So angle BCA plus angle BCD equals 180. We know BCA is 35. So we get 35 plus BCD equals 180. A bit of subtraction and we're home. Angle BCD equals 145, which is answer choice D. And we're done. This lesson had a lot of valuable information. Replay it if you need to and check out the lecture notes. Looking at a figure with only one known angle can be daunting, but as we just saw, Knowing the rules of geometry can unlock many mysteries for us on the SAT. Although we are at the end of this lesson, your work is not done. Time to put all those practice problems to good use.